In this lesson, we're going to have a look at these two concepts, bias and sampling. Now, the main thing to remember is that we always or mostly use samples to collect information. We discussed in an earlier video that it's not always practical to collect information from every single person. That would be a census. It is done, but not very practical. And so the purpose of a sample is to provide an estimate of the characteristic that you're looking at for a whole population. So what that simply means is you use a sample to try and work out what the whole population is like without having to ask the whole population for information. So therefore the challenge is to select a sample that will work and you need to make sure that it's free from prejudice or as free as possible from prejudice and that it's large enough to represent the whole population. So looking at these sorts of things, you know that if you take too small a sample, for example, you might not get a good idea of what the whole population is like. You might be lucky, but you won't really know. A biased sample, therefore, is one in which the data has been unfairly influenced in some ways, and it's by the collection process so that it doesn't really represent the whole population. So if you take a biased sample and then draw conclusions about that, about the whole population that is, then really you're not going to get true and fair uh, information from that at all. So now let's have a look at a couple of situations to see what sort of bias may be involved. So we're looking at possible bias or unfairness, if you like, with the samples. So let's have a look at the first one. You do a phone survey during the day. Now we could discuss this, but you need to talk about reasons for your answers. You may even want to pause the video at this stage and talk about what possible reasons um, the, these could have for being biased. So if you'd like to do that, do so. However, here are some answers that might help. This sample could be biased, for example, uh, because it's only dealing with people that are home during the day. So the bias is that it's people that are home during the day Now this leads that leaves out people that are at work. Um, so of course it's going to be a biased sample. Now if you're trying to survey people who are at home every day, well then it won't be biased. But in most cases this wouldn't be the right survey to do in getting general information from the population. What about a survey of people on a train station? Well what would be the bias here? All of these have got some form of bias and that would be clearly people who catch other forms of transport would be left out. Okay, so that's a very important concept of bias as well. Bias, what about surveying a football crowd? Yep, there's a bias in this. And the bias would be that it's only dealing with people who attend football matches. So perhaps there would be, you now this is, might be a, an unfair statement, but perhaps um, there may be more males than females which traditionally that's the way it's been. More males are involved with sporting events like this than females, although that's changing over time. And um, let's have a look at the last one. These are only possible biases, but there are biases in all of these. So 10 people are tested with a new drug developed to cure the common cold. The bias simply is here that this sample is not big enough. So this is not a large enough sample. to draw conclusions.
So you need to look very carefully at every group or every sample that you look at to see whether there's some form of bias which would give you an unfair uh, conclusion about the whole population. Now let's look at this example. It says sometimes people are biased, uh, sorry, use biased samples to enhance their claims for their product or to support a particular point of view. That's called bias. For example, if you wanted the local council to upgrade its swimming pool, what sample of people would you choose to survey? Well, clearly, the sample of people you would take would be people at the swimming pool. So these are people who use it, and most of them would say, yes, let's upgrade. So people at the pool. So you would expect the people who use the pool to be biased very favourably towards that sort of proposal. Okay, so if that was the case, the information that the council got may be misleading because maybe not everybody in the community would like to see money spent in that way. Now I'll just move this down again, give myself a bit of space. What about this situation where it says sometimes we want a sample which is biased towards a certain group so, for example, what would be a suitable sample to survey if we wanted to have some sort of bias? So we want to bias it towards investigating the most popular movies. Well, we'd investigate people who go to the movies. Um, so maybe people in the foyer. So we'll put this here, people in the foyer. of, a, of a, a movie theater. Uh, what about this one here? Once again, we're looking for bias here because we're really trying to get a certain group. And in this case, we want to collect information about the cleanliness of trains. So clearly you would ask for people, ask the questions of people who travel on trains. Now the point about this is that these biases are reasonably fair because you're actually trying to find out what people think about the cleanliness of trains. So it would sort of be wrong going and asking people who don't use the trains. They'd be maybe using hearsay or rumour. So sometimes you do have to target the sample very carefully and although it seems biased, there's a good reason to do it. So the results really will be fair results for your type of research. So you need to carefully investigate bias in no matter what research you do or what sampling you do.